Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. In today's video, we'll be going through the top 10 best commanders to use from Zendikar Rising. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for all things MTG related. And I'll pop on screen now the winner from the set booster giveaway from our last video. Congrats and we'll DM you on Insta and get that set booster pack headed your way. Now, let's get right into the video. Coming in as the 10th best commander from Zendikar Rising, we have Rick, steadfast leader. No, God, please, no, no! Only joking, the actual 10th best commander is Taborax, Hope's Demise. This flying 2-2 demon cleric is a cheap to play commander and one that if you make the most out of its abilities, you can get out of hand before you know it. Instantly, Ard wants to go the old classic Shadowborn Apostle route and get out millions of them. Sack them all, trigger Tabarax, gain life and draw a ton of cards as Shadowborn is a cleric. Of course, being black, you can add all those creature sack outlets like Razaketh and Whisper, Blood Liturgist, and get rid of your creatures whenever you decide to. Again, fill your decks with those sack outlets like Ashnod's Altar and Phyrexian Altar. Imagine if you managed to sack 10 creatures, suddenly Tabrax is a 12-12 commander with lifelink. That's a two-turn KO for your opponents, not to forget all the life you'll gain too. My favorite card to use for old Tabby would be Wake the Dead. Bring back a load of creatures Use them to cause a load of carnage, then they are sacrificed and you're making Tabarax even stronger. What a beast. Coming in as the ninth best commander from Zendikar Rising, we have Grackmore, Skyclave Ravager. And this is one scary looking Hydra Horror. Another cool commander revolving around plus one counters. This Hydra gets even stronger if your dying creatures have plus one, plus one counts on them. You want those plus one staples like Bloodspore, Thrinax and Renata, Call to the Hunt. Make sure those creatures have counters on them as they ETB and then go for double down with cards like Corpse Jack Menace and Colonian Hydra. Double those counters and really overwhelm your opponents with those big creatures. Running cards like the Ozolith with Grackmore are absolutely essential as when those creatures die, the Ozolith gets those counters and then you can redistribute them all right back onto Grackmore. Of course, get out your Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves and protect Grackmore forever and ever. And ever and ever. In as the 8th best Zendikar Rising commander, we have Charix, the Raging Isle. Now, is Charix one of the most viable commanders? No. But is it one of the most popular and unique commanders in a while? Absolutely. Obviously, many people just want to go crab tribal, throwing all those crabs, but to me, that's just shellfish. One of the best strategies I've seen is throw in that Tetsuko, attack with your zero Charix that now can't be blocked. Use Charix's ability to make him super strong and then start pounding your opponents in the face. Um, phrasing? Get in those big boy artifacts like Hammer of Nazahan and Sword of Feast and Famine and in no time at all, your opponents will start getting crabby. Throw in more cards like Aqueous Form and Thassa, God of the Sea, and really stock up on those ways to make Charix unblockable, and you'll end up picking off your opponents in no time. Of course, the Gathering the Magic famous Card of the Deck Award will always go to training grounds for your Charix deck. Cheapen Charix's ability and make him extra strong for extra cheap. Charix, we all love you. Let's hope they release a Charix secret lair sometime soon. For the seventh best Zendikar Rising Commander, we have Kaza, Royal Chaser. And to make Kaza's ability effective, we obviously need all those wizards. Get onto the field those effective wizards like Barrel, Chief of Compliance, and Afeto Alchemist. Pile on even more wizards such as Dual Caster Mage and Stony Brook Banneret, and in no time, you'll be able to pop off Kaza's ability and copy things such as an overloaded Cyclonic Rift or maybe a Blatant Thievery. Start popping off and changing the game at a nice, super cheap price. Maybe add those really expensive to play cards like Enter the Infinite, Beacon of Tomorrows and Omniscience. Really cheapen the casting costs with Kaza and all her wizards and soon your friends will start to wish you never made a Kaza deck. I'd also throw in something like Illusionist's Braces, and then you've got a chance to double Kaz's ability and really put the final nail in your opponent's coffin. Just missing out on the top half, the sixth best Zendikar Rising Commander is Zagrath, Thief of Heartbeats. This Rakdos Commander is a beast, a 4-4 for 6 CMC that has Flying, Death Touch and Haste, plus it gives all your other creatures Death Touch. 
getting those party members like Dagger Caster and Goblin Chain Whirler, get some damage on arrival and instantly destroy any Planeswalkers your opponents may have. If you have a full party, Zagrath is going to constantly cost 4 less to cast, which is absolutely huge in Commander. Throw in other legendary flyers like Drana and Rancor, Master of Pranks, and really start popping off and making all those different triggers go wild. Whack in Commander staples like Archetype of Aggression and give all your creatures trample. If your side of the board has all creatures with trample and death touch, you're going to be near untouchable. Get more party members in like Gonti, Lord of Luxury, and Robert of the Rich and start stealing cards from your opponents, and we all know. There's nothing more fun than making your opponents use their own cards against themselves. Pure evil goodness. A sentence I realise makes no sense. In as the fifth best Zendikar Rising Commander, we have Verizol, the Split Current. Why is this so high, some people may ask? Because I'm a filthy Simic boy. But don't get me wrong, used right, Verizol can be a very strong commander. First up, use those natural start game commander ramp staples and then you go a kicking. This latest set is so stacked with cheap to play kickers that you'll be set for days and be popping off Verizol's ability in no time. Make sure you dig out your copy of Elfheim Druid from Dominaria and cheapen the cost of those kicker cards. Then when the time is right, remove two counters from Verizol and copy those instants and sorceries. Want to do a bit of removal? Copy spells like Beast Within and Crosan Grip. Maybe you want to go the counters way. Copy spells like Invigorating Surge and Inspiring Call. In one fell swoop, get those creatures super strong and draw yourself a boatload of cards. Plenty of ways to go for Verizol and Commander and definitely a cool option if you're looking to build a new deck. Just missing out on the podium places, at number four we have Akiri, Fearless Voyager. And as shown by Lord Josh Lee Kwai himself in the most recent game nights, this is a commander not to be taken lightly. A 3-3 Boros core warrior that resolves all around equipment and card draw is already a winner for the often unseen red-white commander combo. Make sure you have those equipment loving cards like Shram and Pure Steel Paladin and you're getting that extra card draw whenever an equipment hits the field. Make sure you have those must-have equipment shooters like Stoneforge Mystic and Steel Shaper's Gift and obviously look for those iconic iconic cards like the Sword of Feast and Famine and Sunforger and you'll be ahead of the game in no time at all. Other must-have equipment to include would be Shadow Spear and Sword of the Animist. Pump up your creatures, give them lifelink, trample and let them get more lands whenever you attack. And lastly, have creatures like Balan and Sun Titan and have two creatures that will really benefit when you go in on that attack. For the third best Zendikar Rising Commander, we have Morag, Fury of Akum, the landfall living Minotaur warrior who just loves his extra combat phases. Now instantly, whenever I see Morag, I want to add cards like Aggravated Assault and Relentless Assault. Main phase, combat phase, another one. Main phase, combat phase, another one. If you've got the mana and Agasol, you can essentially have so many extra phases and more likely win the game. Get out cards like Alpine Guide and Solemn Simulacrum and get that extra land out on your turn and trigger Morag to get those extra phases and attacks. Get out those strong creatures like Urubrask the Hidden and Ilharg and your opponent's creatures will enter tapped and thanks to Urubrask, during each combat you can put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield that is tapped and attacking. Lastly, if you have those enchantments like Fiery Emancipation, you're doing triple damage on each of the many, 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 many combat steps. Runner up and the second best Zendikar Rising Commander, we have Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, and probably my favourite card from Zendikar Rising as a whole. As I've said before, if you have Ashaya, you absolutely have to team it up with Timber Protector. Ashaya turns all your non-token permanents into forests, and Timber makes all those forests indestructible. So make sure you have cards like Wild Pear or Green Sun Zenith, so you can fetch out Timber and get your game plan going as early as possible. Have Leweather and Argothian Elder on the field and then you've got almost unlimited mana as you can tap and untap those to untap each other and all your other forest permanents. And of course, once you've got a million lands on the field, whack down that trusty Avenger of Zendikar, get all those plants and start beefing up that super wide army. Imagine how strong a Shire would be with all those lands. Just insane. And coming in as the best commander from Zendikar Rising, we of course have Omnath, Locus of Creation. And who else could it really be besides Omnath? 
A must-have card to pair off with Omnath is Ancient Green Warden. Have those lands triggering off twice and start gaining from all those Omnath triggers. Get in cards like Azusa and Exploration and make sure you double down on the amount of land you play each turn. And cover all those bases with cards like Ramanap, Excavator and Crucible of Worlds. Make sure you can play lands from anywhere just in case your opponents start taking you to Mill City. Add in all those fetch lands like Scalding Tan and Windswept Teeth. Double down on land triggers. Plus, if you have those graveyard land recursion options, then you can do that again on your next turn. If you really wanted to go tribal, you could focus on those elementals. Use previous versions of Omnath, or maybe even a Risen Reef. And before you know it, you and all those elementals will destroy your opponents and take back control once more of Zendikar. There we have it. That is the list. Make sure you like the video and please do subscribe. Help the channel grow and grow and keep your eye out for upcoming MTG content and hopefully soon we may have a game of Commander. For now though, I'm all tapped out so I'll see you in the next video.